Welcome to the Latin Wealth Podcast, a podcast dedicated to educating the Latino community about entrepreneurship, investing, and business. Yo, what's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to Wealth Wednesday. Super excited about today's episode. Um, it's funny, before we get into it, you know, Jeremiah and I were just talking about the consistency that we've been putting in, the work that we've been putting in. Now, you guys can go ahead and, and fact check us. If you guys want, you can check the, the paper trail, whatever you want. But we have not missed a Monday, or I'm sorry, a Wednesday, a Wealth Wednesday episode since we started, literally since we started, Jeremiah recently came back from Puerto Rico. I travel, he travels, he's got a family, I got a family. We have yet to miss a Wealth Wednesday. And if that means anything to you guys, if you guys haven't learned anything, it would mean the world to us. If you could just share this episode with one other person that needs to hear this, if you can just like, subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast episode, if you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of this podcast and you can leave a rating and review, those little things would mean the world to us. And that would show that you appreciate us. You show that you appreciate the work that we put in the consistency. And that let us know that you guys are enjoying the content. We know that you guys are enjoying the content. It's been growing and whatnot. But if you can just take that extra step today, share it with somebody, like, subscribe, leave a comment, rating, review. Those things will help this reach more people um, as it should. All right. So just had to start off with that. But with that being said, we're going to be jumping into everybody's favorite airline, Spirit Airlines. <laughs> um, all jokes aside, Spirit Airlines files for. And you swore you never, you swore you never ride on Spirit. I don't, I don't do Spirit. Y'all know Chris right. is bougie. He said he don't do Spirit. But, uh. <laughs> we're going to get into that today. <laughs> uh, they filed for bankruptcy. We're going to get into why they filed for for bankruptcy. Are they going out of business? What's going to happen? Can you still use your travel credit? We're going to get into all that today. We're also going to be getting into why South Korea is betting big on Argentina in 2024 and going into 2025. We're going to be exploring both of these topics today. Jeremiah, my brother, how you feeling today? How you doing? Talk to um, me. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling illustrious like you. Yes, sir. Um, you know. I'm feeling good, man. I, I, it's, it's always good to to be here. The consistency, we say that's a superpower. So we're here every single week, and it's for the love of the people. So I'm feeling great. For the love of the people, absolutely. Um, with that being said, also this Friday, we're dropping a new uh, Latin Wealth podcast interview. Just to give you a quick teaser about that episode, um, this in individual is out here in Dallas, Texas, and he owns multiple different restaurants out here in Dallas. Now, what's interesting and the reason why I wanted to get him on is because if you hear from a lot of business owners and you probably have heard from us, the one industry that we would not touch as a business mm -hmm. owner, I know I wouldn't touch it, is the I restaurant would. industry. And yep. so these are questions that I asked them. Why did you get into the restaurant industry? Why are you guys thriving and why are other people failing? Um, this mm. individual has had his restaurant open since 2015, and made it through COVID, um, and he's still thriving, doing well, opening up multiple restaurants in Dallas, Texas. If you guys want to know about the mindset, what it took for him to do that, tap in this Friday. Great episode. Let's get it. Great conversation. Spirit Airlines has filed for bankruptcy protection on Monday right after struggling with a series of losses. All right. So this is this is crazy. Spirit Airlines has not reported an annual profit since 2019. And they have lost more than $2.2 billion since the start of 2020. $2.2 billion would it be? All right. Would it be? Would it be? Spirit filed for bankruptcy protection after its recent fail uh, renegotiation with its debt. That didn't go through. And it also struggled to capitalize on recovery from the pandemic. They were one of the companies that did not uh, uh, recover and due partly because of significant engine problems, increased competition and a deal that was blown after a federal judge blocked a planned merger with JetBlue Airways this year. So they had all these things planned and lined up to succeed and nothing went through. Nothing's been going 
Right, right. So if you go into um, whatever app you use to to invest in stocks, or if you even go to Google, you type in Spirit Airline, <clears throat> Spirit Airlines, their stock price, you can just see that it's just been on a downhill effect for the past couple of years. It, it's actually kind of sad to see. Um, one last thing, and I'm going to get Jeremiah in here. So what they filed for is what's often called a reorganization bankruptcy. And this process grants the company legal protection as it looks to cut costs and reduce its total debt. Jeremiah, how are you feeling about this? When you've seen this, what were your first thoughts? Duh. <laughs> Duh. Anytime that you get onto a plane and you have to play for the seat, you got to pay for your ice cubes, you got to pay for your armrest, you got The to toilet. the toilet, like uh, napkins that you, you only get one napkin. I was like, dang, really? <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, we're it's, back. come on, man. What were you thinking? They Mm grew hmm initially, right, in like 2013, 2014. Um, they initially grew a lot of times with a lot of the spots that you could kind of go from Florida to, uh, mm hmm you know, spots in the Caribbean. They wanted a cheaper route that you could do that. They provided that. But here's the problem. They never progressed. And as inflation began to grow, you have to find ways to increase either market share, which you're not going to do because the, the, the failed deal, right, is with the person that's leading in that space, which is JetBlue. Um, you weren't going to beat them. Right. Mm -hmm. So either you're going to have to increase market share or you're going to have to find new ways of getting revenue and the new ways of getting revenue was for them to charge for every single thing in this world. Mm -hmm. So people stopped liking that. Like it was cool in the beginning when you only could pay 50 bucks and you get on the plane and it was all good. Right. This I'm, I'm showing my age. This is before you, you got charged for bags. No, no, Yes, there was a time where we didn't pay for luggage. But anyway, when that starts to happen, what do you think is going to happen? You don't hold the weight. You don't have the, you know, the actual uh, market share, right? During COVID, everything was shut down. You were already struggling in 2019. So when 2020 hit through, to, through today, you've never made money. So the business model in 2020, someone should have reassessed the business model because it was almost ground zero for everybody, right? Every hospitality-based industry, planes, travel, all this, hotels, right? Everything was down. That was the time to reset because everyone was going to take a major loss during that time. Your people, your thought, your your brains, right? Your, your, your innovative people in the company should have been trying to figure out what do we do to restructure? What do we do to make more money? How do we do it in a good Yeah. way where we don't cost the customers? But they never did that. They never reset. I will say this. The fact that they're not completely done yet, there's still hope for them. And the reason for that also is because, uh, well, Trump just got elected. And anybody that knows anything, he's big for deregulation. And so he wants to keep the government out of the business so business can grow and soar as big as possible. There's going to be a lot more mergers and acquisitions. So Mm -hmm. I think Yeah, if I were them, I'd try JetBlue and Spirit again. Now they're going to get Spirit on discount. But it's fine. It would save the company. yeah, facts. And they should try to do that. They should try to do that merger again, that acquisition. They should try to do that. And I think that it'll it'll work this time because they won't run into the red tape. Um, that's my thoughts. No, that's, that's a good word. And I think, yeah, I agree. I think it's either going to be Spirit and JetBlue or Spirit and Frontier. And somebody's That's going big. to get, somebody's going to get Spirit on a major discount. Um, and it's interesting And Frontier's earlier. owned by Southwest, right? Good question. I'm not too sure. We have to look that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Go ahead. My bad. but no, 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 you good. It's interesting. Earlier you were like, yo, um, you bougie, you never fly Spirit. Are you right. But today, <laughs> it's funny because I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going to happen with this. Like, I, I have spirit credit. Like, I had a couple hundred dollars. I'm like, I don't know what's going to go on with this situation. I don't want to lose it. Let me get, Right. let me go ahead and just book my ticket for, uh, we have a trip coming up in Miami. Miami. Let me just book that real quick, a couple hours. It's fine. Um, the website was even tripping, bro. I'm like, is this thing going out already? I like, what what's going? On? I had to call in and book the flight. But my point is, the one thing that I find really interesting about Spirit that I would love to ask them or, you know, get their pick their brains about is the interface of the website, where it's mostly 
all about upselling and cross-selling. And I'm like, does that, has that proven to work in that industry? And what I mean by that is when you go on their website and you click on, you know, a seat that you want or click on the ticket you want, you're being upsell to be in this class or this seat and you can bring your luggage or you can bring your carry on. It's like all these different, as somebody that's in marketing, I guess what I'm saying is to me, it's a little too much. It sells Especially when the ticket is already like a plane ticket is a high cost item as it is. Sure. And you're cross selling and upselling. You end up paying the same amount as like a Southwest or American ticket. More actually. More. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if Yeah. you've used it recently, but I have. I'm like, OK, the, Well, the Frontier. cross, the And frontier, they do the same thing. they do the Yeah. same thing. But cross selling and upselling that type of stuff, to me, that business model works for if you got. a closing line and you want to upsell a hat or something, but the tickets Even in already electronics. electronics. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I, I just, I, as I was preparing for this call and I, I was on the website today, those are some of the things I noticed that just stuck out to me. Bad business model. I mean, if anything, I would have been trying to figure out fuel costs. That's Yeah. a big, that's a, for your whole fleet. If I could get some type of deal on, on fuel, maybe that could, would have saved some money, but this is a bad business model. I mean, they never innovated, right? They never adapted to the way time goes. And there's a time period that's pre-COVID and post-COVID, right? So, and, and, and even during. So, like, during you had certain, um, uh, what do you call it? The bike, the bike, what was it called? Where What's you're riding on a bike and you do, that? uh, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. so that, that joint was jumping. Zoom was Yeah. going crazy, right? So, that's during post There's things that are totally going that wasn't going during the beginning. And Yeah. so spirit was great Mm -hmm. pre-COVID, Right. never adjusted in the time period when everybody was down, which is crazy. We saw a lot of companies that got complacent and they didn't adapt. And so when COVID was over with, you didn't make any innovations. And so people came out ready to go. Mm. During COVID, guys, that's when OpenAI shored up what they did. That's when Microsoft shored up there. That's when Zuckerberg started working out and and You see what I'm saying? There, Mm-hmm. during that time period is when people were getting better. They were Getting developing better. themselves Yeah. and getting ready for the time afterwards. And Spirit didn't do that. So Yeah. It's 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 duh interesting. again. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a dub moment. It's interesting because you don't, I mean, look, these other airlines, Delta, like they have loyal members. They have Yeah. medallion members and, you know, Sure. people that only fly with Delta, only fly with American I don't hear very many people that only fly with spirit with all due respect. I know some, but those are probably not the type of people that you want to take that flight with. Mm. So look, a couple more things about spirit. We want, we, I hate to keep beating up on this, but spirit chapter 11 filing is the first by a major airline in more than a decade, but this is far from unusual. Airlines have filed for bankruptcy more than 180 times in re recent decades. This includes American Airlines, Delta, and United, three of the biggest companies in the industry. They're still thriving. They're still, still doing well, have also filed for bankruptcy in their, um, in their history. So, again, like So Jeremiah where does, said, go ahead. I was going to say, the question is, where does that, that group of people that may be a million plus that maybe were utilizing spirit to handle and take their trips in the Caribbean, where does that now shift? Does it go to JetBlue? Who picks up Mm that traffic, right? Is there somebody that's eyeing that, that's saying, hey, here's a little niche market that we can get, you know, get some revenue off of? I wonder, because one of the -hmm. I crazy think it's things frontier about spirit. Frontier. Okay. yeah I think Yeah, it's because frontier it gave people those straight flights. yeah You know, from Miami, you could go anywhere in the Caribbean. So yeah it was a it I was think a I think it's frontier it, it's definitely one of the more affordable options um yeah I think it's I'd be I'd be shocked to see if somebody doesn't pick up spirit In 2025. let's see it. But my thing is, if a, let's just say a company like Delta buys Spirit, how does that benefit Delta? Oh, it's great. Because Number they one, got you more, have, more fleets to plan? yeah, Okay. yeah. Well, no, not even just that, right? You think volume, but also it, it now breaks them into a different demographic. Those are two different demographics. Like you True. said, there's United, there's Delta. 
there's American Qatar air, right? There's, there's levels to people that fly in certain airlines. And so that JetBlue frontier, uh, uh, spirit, that's a different group of people, but there's more people that's in that demographic, right? In the cheaper and it would buy a cheaper flight. And so if a major company bought that, it could be a separate department, but it gives them a new revenue stream now. Mm. As long as you can get your people, your think tank people to go down and restructure the business model and they can find little points to where they can make more money. That's that's what I mean, that would be a smart thing to do, I think. Get Yeah, it on 100%. discount. Yeah, get them on discount 100%. Um, something else that may be the smart thing to do is South Korea eyeing Argentina, investing in Argentina. We're going to be breaking this down. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, and we're going to get into a couple of different things here. Give me one second. Let's see. Share. Boom. Let me know if you can see that. Yep, we're good. Should be good to go. Let me move us on the screen. We're in the All way. right. Cool. <laughs> uh, are we in the way of the text? No, no, we're good. Okay, okay, we're good. For sure. Okay, look, this is not what I wanted to show you guys just yet. We'll, we'll get to that afterwards. Um, shout out to Latino Metrics, as usual. Always coming up with the phenomenal graphs and information. We're going Always. to be diving into South Korea is Argentina's top capital investor in 2024. All right. So this left side, if you guys are watching on YouTube or if you're listening, the left side of the graph is going to be year 2023. The right side of the graph is going to be the year 2024. Now, on the left side of the graph, the year 2023, the top capital investors in Argentina, number one, Canada, number two, the Netherlands, number three, Spain, number four, Denmark, uh, number five, the Cayman Islands. All right, those are the top five in 2023, um, and South Korea was towards the bottom of the list. Fast forward to one year later, South Korea, number one, USA, number two, UK, number three, Canada, number four, China, Number five, we're going to get into China later today. Uh, Jeremiah, what, what are your thoughts on this when you've seen this graph and this information? I look at the countries that were in 2023 um, when it was a standardized investment, I guess you would say. You have Canada, that's number one. Uh, you know, the Netherlands, Spain. Okay, cool, right? Cayman Islands came in at number five. That tells you something. Then fast Mm. forward to a year and you see South Korea, USA, UK. Look at the names that, that it's in that top five. China, Canada, UK, USA, South Korea. So four out of five of those are major world powers. And so you start to see a shift and you probably wonder why. And it has to do with the debt that Argentina has, right? And, and the investment in that debt and what I can cover or what I can take over in a major country in South America geographically, right? That position and having that position in, in that country and in South America, what can I buy at reduced price, right? How much money can we get? How does it benefit us? That's what I, I mean, for me, that's what I see. And you know, it's something important because it's five. I mean, South Korea is not major, major, but it's five major countries. Yeah. You went from nothing, basically Canada being the only, I mean, Canada and Spain, but Yeah. really right to five major countries investing, being the top five investors. Mm. So let me dive into some more information. For the first time in five years, Q1 of 2024 saw an increase of 37% of capital invested compared to the Crazy. previous year for Argentina. Right. Who's leading this capital investment? As we just discussed, South Korea has led the pack in 2024, accounting for 32 percent of the three hundred and sixty six million dollars of capital invested in the first three months this year, followed by the United States, which is at 30 percent. All right. Now, if you're interested to knowing what are they interest, what are they invested in? What, why are they over there? Uh, many South Korean companies such as Samsung, Samsung. LG, Pasco, a steel manufacturer company, have a strong presence in Argentina. Um, those three companies alone are worth a combined of $300 billion. 
dollars, and they have a strong presence in Argentina. Um, Argentina exports to South Korea are are approaching one billion dollars this year, representing a twenty percent surge compared to twenty twenty three. It's amazing to me. Um, you also have to remember in South America, like we said, they have the the actual raw material that's necessary. They have a lot of graphite. They have lithium in South America, right? They've got a lot of the building components that you would need to, that are tech giants would be focused on. Hence the reason you see South Korea, South Korea, which is right a tech haven, um, and in the USA, of course, us we got to be there. So, I mean, Yeah. it's a it's a solid investment. Probably get things Yeah. a lot cheaper there too. The cost of the raw material. So let, let me ask you this. You you played basketball in Argentina, correct? Correct. When you were out there, was it considered a safe country? It, that's relative. Um, the areas True, that you would be true. in, but there was, there was crime. I mean, there's hood. There's Yeah. you know, yeah. Um, I would say it's not where it was today. It's much more developed today. Um, I think. gentrified is what we say here in america so i would say that there's a lot more of that there now but yeah when i was there it was it was cool it was just you know kind of more family oriented but you did have your areas that were dangerous Right. Now, the reason why I ask that is I'm curious to know if here's another graph, safest American cities, Argentina mm -hmm. and Canada shines. I wonder if information like this is attractive to countries to South Korea, in addition to the investing But just to know that it's it's a country that's up and coming and somewhere that they can invest in, um, you know, with real estate or whatever, planning their business there. I wonder if if this has something to do with it as well. Now, if you look at this list, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, when you don't have to worry about uh, drug and drug cartels and drug based, you know, economy and, and gangs taking over your your business, then, yeah, it's pretty attractive, right? A hundred percent. So you got three of the, what is it? Honestly, the top five countries, the safest American cities um, are three cities. Are, the first three cities are going to be uh, Canadian cities and the next two are from Argentina. Um, but take this, I would say take this graph for a grain of salt because I'm looking at it and I'm seeing Los Angeles And then Dallas is below that. It, it, Dallas is more dangerous than Los Angeles. I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. That's Uh, that's per. I mean that's per capita, right? So, okay, yeah, it makes sense. it's it, it. Dallas probably is more is more dangerous than Los Angeles per capita. You know, I mean Los Angeles got like eight, seven, eight million people. Dallas is about a million and a half to two. So Yeah. True. per capita, True. it may be a little bit more dangerous. As a whole, obviously, L.A. would be the more dangerous. Oh, by far. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. What else? I also wanted to quickly dive into, since we're talking about um, some of the Asian countries that are inv investing in South America, Jeremiah sent me this. Um, in addition to South Korea, even China is getting in as well. Be Beijing is strengthening their economic ties in Latin America as it seeks to further bolster trade and gain influence in the resource rich region all right so again we already know china they are all over you know latin america it, it's absolutely insane uh but yeah I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> it's one of them things, you know how like when you're kids, you don't want something. So you see somebody else getting it. yeah This is a literally what I think about the USA. The USA has shunned Latin America, right? Um, we make policies. We elect people that hate, quote unquote, hate that trash and SOBs coming from these countries. Um, so we've given off that vibe, right, that we're not going to work with you. Because you're not good enough to work with us, right? And so, you know, what China says is the same thing that Russia did back in the day with Cuba. They said, hey, I need the, the, the like the geographic location. I need that. I need to be in those spaces, right? Because it gives me access to America. There's things I can influence from there. And I don't mind the money. And I don't think you're all, I don't think you're that bad. I just think you need a little bit of structure and we can help with that. So China goes and they invest the same thing they did in Africa, right? For Yeah. the past decade, they went and invested in Africa. America didn't have any, no, nothing, right? It was just trash. It, I don't want to do blah, blah, blah. It's nothing but 
warlords and blah, blah, right? And so what you see is China taking up, picking up the scraps from mm. the stuff that America didn't want, right? Because it wasn't good enough for America to invest in. And now what you see is China taking over even more than what they were because we owe China trillions of dollars. And so now they're taking everything over. And we have nothing to say about it because these are all countries that we shunned for the past 10 to 15 years. I think it's it's safe to say um, within the next, and I was reading about this, we were talking about this, but I think it's safe to say within the next five to 10 years, China is the number one country in the world. Yeah, yeah. It knocks America off. It's yeah. it's already, it's already, it's happening. people are like, oh, it'll never happen. No, it, it's happening. It's, it's happening. Every, <laughs> every Rome has to fall, right? Every empire has fallen. America's empire is number one. It's, it, that's gone. It, people need to just it's okay like it's not like right norway or or great britain great britain had its time right england was number one for a very mm -hmm. long time they had the they had the biggest empire ever in world history right what i'm saying is is all empires fall and it's okay it's not like life is going to stop or mm -hmm. things totally switch or anything like that but this is what happens in china kudos to them for just good business i mean picking up the scraps that's what Damn I see. Scrap. Good business. Yeah, that, that's interesting that you brought up. I think, you know, we are, what's the word that I'm looking for? We're so accustomed to being number one in the yeah. United States. We have, this is all we know. But if you go back in history, not too far back, you know that there's other empires, there's other powerhouses sure. that were here before us and that sure. will be here after us. Sure. This is, and listen, there's some quintessential things that happen when you see an empire fall, right? If you go back to Rome, Rome should always be studied throughout world history forever, right? Rome was probably one of the greatest empires ever. It had the longest run, right? Like 2,000 years, something like mm -hmm. pretty pretty close, something like that, 1,700 years. And they expand, and they were from freaking, um, you know, the Middle East, basically, mm -hmm. to Great Britain, mm -hmm. all the way. That's mm -hmm. a huge amount of land. Mm -hmm. If you study it, what started to happen is they spread themselves too thin and it all started with the the degradation of the family. When the family started to tear apart and other things started to prioritize outside of being in a family, it's the same thing that happened in America, right? In the 40s and 50s and 60s, we were the strongest country ever. Now and today, we don't want to read. Uh, we don't spend time with our family. Families aren't, aren't unified. People don't talk. Like, what happens? China has very strict rules, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, they literally have strict rules. TikTok is like only their kids are watching geography, geometry, and trigonometry. They're not playing out there. Yeah, they're not all the, there's no porno. Like there's all this mm. stuff that's that's degrading to our society and it degraded the family, and they didn't have that. Now let me ask you a question, Chris. Who's who's the barbarian? Because you know, we say China has human rights issues, da, 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 right? But Look at the structure and the way that their children, they're more literate than us. They're way more, they study more, right? Mm -hmm. They have more discipline. So who's the barbarian? Is it them or is it us? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. To be continued. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, I he likes China. No, I'm just speaking. I'm <laughs> no, just, no, I'm just you speaking are. You facts. You're speaking facts. I mean, look, we, we don't have to go very far to see. I've seen some videos of you know, uh, the kids in China, like they're every, they're all in sync playing basketball. Like it's routine. It's, it's a uh, discipline is the word that I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we don't got to go very far to, to understand that and to know that. Uh, I mean, and I, and people are like, well, we can make America great again. Right. That's a slogan of people. Um, sometimes you're just too late. Right. And I and then, you know, and well, that's what we're trying to fight. I get it. But it's it's a universal thing for America and our society and the culture and things like that. Um, will we come up again? I don't know. You and me won't be here. But, you know, I mean, it, it, it it's a rotation. Right. Mm -hmm. And usually every empire has at least 200 years. So we for sure won't be here because China takes yeah. over. They, they'll have their 200 year run of them being the best or whatever. And then who knows who comes after that? Mm. yeah i mean and then what happens after these next four years so you want to make american great for the next four years what happens after that it won't even last that long you have to be able to here's the thing you have to be able to have solid relationships throughout the world right um you can say what you want you want to put tariffs you want to put uh different taxes and things on china or whatever but when china is number one now it's 
you know, it's no fun when the rabbits got the gun and that's what's happening. So maybe we need to try to get in their good graces. Maybe we should try to change the, the relationship stance that we have with China. And maybe we should be trying to innovate and, and work together and, and, you know, more on a collaborative tip. And so that's what I see. If we don't make good relationships, I saw we were talking, I said, I saw the other day that Europe's not happy with things mm -hmm. here. And so you alienate your allies and then your enemies have joined together in bricks and all. So it's like, come on, man, we maybe we need to rethink things a little bit. Yes, it's going it's going to get real interesting. Early first quarter of 2025 is going to be very interesting. You it know, will. president's talking about mass deportation. It's mm. going to happen. I don't know how that's going to affect the economy. They just. We'll see. We'll see. Everyone, everyone that supports it. I. You be careful what you wish for. Sometimes yeah. you get it. And then when you get it, you know, and your house is 18, 19 percent higher than what it was supposed to be because they got to pay the workers now standard standardized pay where you didn't previously. Right. Or when your fruits start to cost, you know, mm -hmm. 20 to 30 cent more per fruit because you had to hire union workers to pick the fruit. Mm. Maybe then, maybe it'll bother you then. I don't know. We'll see. Just saying. We'll see. And we'll be here to give you all this information, to give you guys these perspective. If you guys enjoyed this episode or learned anything from this episode, go ahead and do us a favor. Share this with one other person. Hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Le let us know your thoughts. These are different ways that you can just simply um, show your appreciation to us. And it doesn't cost very much. All right. So look, we appreciate we appreciate you guys for tuning in. And as always, the Latin Wolf family, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Appreciate it, guys.